in the last episode I put back the drive unit here in the car but then it would not start it says uh, check EV system go to a dealership uh, immediately if I would tow this car to Toyota it would cost $200 then the initial diagnosis at Toyota another $200 I think that's not very efficient and also I would not learn a lot from that. Also it is really the question in general if uh, your Toyota dealer can analyze this car because it's a partly Toyota, partly Tesla, special software. Not every Toyota dealer sold this type of electric vehicle, especially outside the state of California. The RAV4 EV has two sets of computer systems on board. The first one is from Toyota. It is accessible uh, here through the OBD port. And uh, you have to use the Toyota TechStream uh, software. Um, the second computer system set is from Tesla. And that can be accessed in the back in this pillar over here. There's a little door there. And behind it is uh, another connector. And it's the blue connector over there and it's a different one so for the Tesla hardware you need software as well it's a Tesla powertrain diagnostics software and it uh, this computer manages the the battery meaning battery management system it communicates and then the the charger the DC to DC converter and the, the drive unit and maybe some more stuff and uh, this system does communicate with the uh, uh, Toyota system but very minimally so if there is an error the system just lets know to the Toyota system hey there is one error uh, or some error and then the Toyota system only shows the check EV system message on the dashboard that's why it's useless to dive into the uh, Toyota system we really have to look at the Tesla system here so instead of going to the dealer, we are going to try online remote uh, diagnostics. And, and I'm going to explain you how that works. It's pretty simple. This is how the RAV4 will be connected to an EV specialist anywhere in the world. The car is connected to a cheap MicroTIC router using a simple cable. The MicroTIC is connected to your home gateway from your internet provider. Next, communications flow through the internet, the gateway of the EV specialist, and the PC of the specialist, so the car can talk to the Tesla powertrain diagnostics software on his PC. In my case, I approached Vladimir Leshenko from Alflash in Ukraine. He is also very active in the comments below many EV YouTube videos. The only things I needed to do is to buy the router and make the custom cable and connect it to my router with a network cable. I will explain how to make the cable at minimum cost. First, buy a male OBD connector. I put a link down below. Next, grab a network cable and cut off one end. Pull that end through the OBD connector strain relief parts. I put shrink tubing over the wires before soldering. Next, solder these four wires as shown. Next, close the two connector shells and screw them shut. Next, you have to melt away the divider between the indicated pins, otherwise it will not plug into the uh, Tesla gateway properly. And this is the result. Also, buy the MicroTIC router or borrow one from someone you know. I put a link down below. Finally, grab a standard network cable that is long enough. Now you have all the things you need. Back to the overview. Before connecting the car, the MicroTIC router needs to be configured. This can be done remotely too, for example using TeamViewer. Of course, maybe your gateway already has the functionality of the MicroTIC router, but every router is different, so that would be impractical to manage remotely. Plus, for security reasons, it may be better to have a dedicated router. But I am not a network specialist. Next, I will show how all of this can work in practice. So here we have our custom cable with custom connector. So we plug it into the Tesla gateway. It's over here. On the other end, we plug into the MicroTIC router. The MicroTIC router needs... Uh, power and we plug it in port number 5 which has been configured for connecting the car 
and we have a network cable that goes to the home router that connects to the internet so So this router or modem or gateway connects to the internet. This is what the software looks like. It shows the state after the car got fixed using ignition on mode. The diagnosis software showed an error code that resulted in a list of things to check including the service plug grip. This is how we found out that I did not correctly mount the service plug grip. As shown here, I did not put the handle of the service plug grip completely vertical before I mounted it. Instead, I held it only at 45 degrees. Visually, after mounting, it seemed like it connected perfectly, so it is difficult to discover if you do not know about this. See also a video link down below with more details. After fixing the problem, this screen shows the car while charging. So now when we start the car, you hear the contactors and it's ready and it drives and it drives very good. Quick inspection for a coolant leak. This is emergency drain number one. There is no coolant present yet, so that's good. All right, that's it for this episode. I wanna thank Vladimir Lechenko for the diagnosis and also for their help, Alex and Victor. And I will keep all of you guys up to date uh, how well the uh, seals will hold up.